give you one more um, or additional uh, way to approach the flexible grid exercise. So um, I'm just going to begin by creating a new file. This is probably going to be the most laborious, uh, but probably the easiest in terms of uh, being broken up into various steps uh, processes. So uh, I'm sure some of you will find it the most um, more useful, more appropriate to your learning style. So I'm going to create a document. I'm going to work with an eight and a half by 11. Uh, I want to make sure that it is a vertical format. Um, I just need one page for now. Um, I can always add more if I need to. And I'm going to create one column, which is fine. And margin half inch, I'm going to leave bleed and slug out at this point. So I'm ready to create this. Here's my document. So to work with a flexible grid in this um, in this tutorial, I'm going to we're going to have to take one extra step. And essentially, we're going to need to pre-visualize our grid, uh, which we, again we can alter later. But uh, we're going to create some visual, essentially guides for ourselves, and then individually place each box of the container into the onto the page uh, that will eventually uh, house our images or hold our images inside of them. So to do so, let's create a visual guide, and we're going to learn uh, how to create guides in InDesign. I'm going to go under Layout, and I'm going to create guides. That's going to be our first step. Again, I'm going to have to sort of uh, make some decisions here, and I'm just I'm going to decide that I have four. I'm going to have four rows and four columns, so 16 containers on this page. I'm going to keep gutter at by def it defaults to sort of a one one sixth of an inch. Um, you can change it if you'd like, let's say, but if you're changing it, make sure it's consistent across the page. So change if you're changing one in rows, change one under columns. And one last step, make sure that you make sure that the guides are fitted to margins, not the page. So you can always preview what you're doing, click preview. So if I fit it to pages, you'll notice I'll move to the edge of the page itself. I want to make sure that my grid is fitted to the margins. So I'm going to make sure I click remove existing ruler guides. So there's no doubling happening. I'm going to click OK. And now I have a set of guides that, um, that are going to essentially help me create my flexible grid. Um, again, these are not permanent incisions or in, in, intrusions into your page or your document. They're just visual. They're, um, they're latent. Uh, so if I click W, which will allow you, me to see my final product, right now my page is blank. Right, so my final product will be blank. These are not going to be physically present on the page itself. Um, and now I can grab my rectangle frame tool, or you could use shortcut F, and I can come to the edge of my margins or my grid here and click and drag and create a box. And it will snap to the edge of this guide. Uh, if I keep dragging, it will let me continue, but I'm just going to make sure that it snaps. If it's not snapping, Make sure that under your grids and guides, sorry, under view grids and guides, you have this option snap to guides enabled. That will allow for any any frames that you're creating to essentially lock to the to the guides that have been created uh, or snap. So and I can continue. I'm gonna let go, create another box, uh, and create another box. You could handle it this way. You could return to your direct selection tool. Uh, you could click V or click Escape, and that will return you to the to direct by default. You can also hold an Option key if you're on a Mac or Alt key if you're on PC, and click that button. And you'll notice that your direct selection tool will sort of uh, acquire a different appearance. It'll give you that second arrow. So now I can click, uh, grab this box, drag it, and it will duplicate it. So you could also handle it that way. So I can essentially keep holding Option or Alt key and keep dragging and so on and so forth. Again, I can return to my rectangle selection or my rectangle tool, frame tool, and continue creating frames that way as well. So, or direct selection tool, hold option or alt, and keep creating. So keep going until you fill the entire page. And alternatively, I can actually, uh, with my tool, again, I keep holding option key, I can select four of them and now that I have four frames selected, I can also keep holding Option or Alt key, click and grab, and it will essentially duplicate all the selected items on the page. So there we go. Now I have my 16 uh, rectangle boxes, and uh, my grid is ready. So at this point, um, 
if I click W again, nothing is really appears on the page, only the items that have been selected. So it's still blank. All of this is again, just a skeleton or in a sense, a system of visual that allows me to create a visual system in which I will place content later. So at this point I can grab the gap tool. So which would be, you could use a shortcut U or it's a third, fourth tool in my current arrangement of tools, gap tool. And if you notice that again, if I move it in between any of these sort of a boxes, it will highlight the row or the column spacing between or the gaps between these frames. So I could click and hold and manipulate the height of images in an entire row, right? Or an entire column row and so on and so forth. Or if I hold shift, if I hold shift, um, at this point, the U or the gap tool is gonna only allow me to manipulate the relationship between two adjacent frames. So again, shift will change that relationship to just two individual frames. So now I can um, manipulate spacing between one or the other and so on and so forth. So I can work on the dynamism. And if those guys are distracting to you, you could go under view, grids and guys. And at this point now that you're done, you could delete all the guys on the spread, right? So you could actually get rid of them. Alternatively, you could click control semicolon or command semicolon if you're on a Mac. And that will also disable the visibility of those grids by, by clicking command or control semicolon, it will return them to your visibility if you'd like to reuse them. So, and here we go. Um, I can, now at this point that my grid is created, um, if I'd like to, I mean, if I want to manipulate it further and develop so it creates some dynamism. Oh, I'm doing the wrong thing here, shift. I'm just gonna sort of, so now this grid looks good to me. I'm gonna create, uh, again, go back to my selection tool and I prepared some images, a folder of images. And now again, just like previously, I can individually pick images or select images from my folder and drag them into the frame, right? Um, and now we're seeing only a portion of that image because if I double click, you'll notice that this sort of, uh, there is this orange container that appealed on the page. It knows that my image is significantly larger than my box. So in terms of resolution, so I can scale it, right? I can physically scale that image, hold shift when you're scaling, that will lock the proportions of that image, it won't distort it. And, and I can double click on that frame. And I can manipulate it sort of a, its relationship in that, in that frame. So here I see that that image is actually vertically challenged, right? It's a vertical format image. So maybe this container is not the best choice for it. So I could um, delete it and actually move it into more of a vertical container. Maybe that's a better option. Again, I can double click on it and size it right, to fit that container. So if you don't wanna do this work manually, again, make sure that you hold shift when you're sizing, because if you don't hold shift, you're gonna distort the proportional relationship of this image and it's gonna appear distorted, right? Um, so uh, one other option, again, you have, as I mentioned in previous tutorials, you could make sure that your container, so the blue frame is selected. So click once on the container itself. If you double click, it'll select the image. If you single click, it'll just create, create the container, select the container. You can right click on it, go under fitting or control click onto that container. And you can select either fit content proportionally or fill frame proportionally. So you can click fill frame proportionally and we'll fill that entire frame as the image for me, right? So when I can continue doing this, I can grab another image, place it into this container, for example, right click into the container, select it, right click, fitting, fill frame proportionally, and there you go. And I keep doing it until I have done all of my images or placed all of my images uh, into the container. Fitting, fill frame proportionally, and so on and so forth. So, um, so essentially, that's another way to approach uh, uh, an exercise tool. Uh, the exercise one, the flexible grid.